so the last one that we're going to do, we are now going to explore a different way of converting things from the continuous time to the discrete time, things being filters specifically. We'll say, okay, so this one is called the bilinear transform. So this is another method, it accomplishes the same thing as the pole zero matching, but it's just a different way. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to take some h of s and convert it to an h of z, specifically where z is equal to e to the s of t. So looking at this, we can also say um, that uh, s is equal to 1 divided by t, the natural log of z. So we can turn this around backwards, and now we can say that h of z is going to be equal to h of s, where you substitute in, s is going to be equal to 1 divided by t, the natural log of z. However, this is a horrible, horrible chunk of math to do. If you start introducing natural logs into these transfer functions, you're never going to solve them. So there is a series expansion, and it's called the Laurent series. Okay, and the Laurent series says that natural log of z is going to be equal to 2 times the quantity z minus 1 divided by z plus 1 plus 1 third times the quantity z minus 1 divided by z plus 1 cubed plus 1 fifth times z minus 1 divided by z plus 1 quantity to the fifth plus dot dot dot. Um, and this is for real z uh, greater than or equal to zero. Okay. It's actually greater than zero. For any real z greater than zero, you can make this substitution and say that the natural log of z is equal to 2 times the quantity of z minus 1 divided by z plus 1 plus 1 third of z minus 1 divided by z plus 2. But whatever. Keeps going. So obviously, going from here to here is much simpler. Not really, but it gets rid of the natural log. And so engineers are always one for saying, well, that's pretty much close enough. So We've cut this down a little bit, and we just say, okay, s is going to uh, go to 1 divided by t natural log of z. Natural log of z, which is approximately equal to 2 divided by t times the quantity z minus 1 divided by z plus 1. And forget the rest of this series expansion. This is close enough. All right. So, obviously, this is not perfect. Um, so now with this information, we can make these substitutions making some assumptions. However, it's not perfect. What we see, oh, I lost my page of notes, I'm trying to get two. All right, so what we see is that we get this thing that's called frequency wrapping. So, S is going to be approximately equal to 2 divided by t, z minus 1 divided by z plus 1. That's where we're going.
But here's the problem. The problem is called frequency wrapping. Or warping. Sorry, not not wrapping, warping. So Basically, what this looks like is that when we have something in the, um, let's see, this is omega hat, this is digital frequency. And this is omega in the uh, S domain. or J omega domain, Laplace domain, whichever one you want to consider. So what we see is that the frequency has a mapping that looks like this, where this is negative pi divided by t, and this is pi divided by t. So, when we have some input omega that we want to convert over to some omega hat, using the bilinear method, these things get warped. And so, if we were to just try to do a straight transit translation like we were doing on the pole zero matching, we said we know our pole here, we're going to create a pole on the other side. Well, this one doesn't work because it doesn't map straight across. If we have some high omega here, it wraps over to something like that. But as we get lower here, you know, it's not a one-to-one -one mapping from the S domain to the, or it's not a linear mapping from the S domain to the P domain. Sorry, Z domain. So what we do in order to overcome this is we have a thing that's called uh, uh, let me find exactly where it is. We want to pre-warp the signals, uh, the frequencies. So specifically, what we can say is that the omega hat is going to be equal to 2 divided by period times the tangent of the omega t divided by 2. So this is the relation that we have that creates that graph that I just showed you. So what we want to do is undo this before it ever occurs. So here's the procedure. Here is the bilinear filter design procedure. First thing we do is define all band critical frequencies for the digital filter. Now band critical. We're now operating on a region, right? Depending on omega s, that determines omega n. The region of operation is from negative omega to n to omega n. So we want to define our critical frequencies inside that negative pi to pi region. And so all these are actually the critical frequencies that are not in sample space, but are in continuous space. So we need to look at the original omega when we're designing the filter, so that when we convert it to the digital domain, it'll be right. Second step. So once we have these found in continuous time frequency space, 
we pre warp warp w a r p all critical frequencies this is done using omega hat is going to be equal to t divided by 2 uh, actually, I don't want to use omega hat. Let's use omega tick. Omega tick is t divided by 2 times tangent of omega t divided by 2. Okay? Third thing, design the continuous uh, time filter. using the pre-warped frequencies. We're actually going to redesign the filter with these new omega tick values so that the filter design has already taken into consideration the distortion that's going to be applied to it by the assumptions that we've made. Alright, now the fourth thing we're going to do is use the bilateral transform a bilinear bilinear okay I've been saying it right bilinear transform to H of S get H of Z and the fifth thing we're going to do is write the equation for the digital filter. All right, so we're going to look at our system and we're going to say, okay, these are the critical frequencies. That would be such as if it is a low pass filter, what's that knee frequency? If it's a band pass filter, what's the peak frequency? And then we're going to pre warp all the critical frequencies using this equation. The next thing we're going to do is design the continuous time filter. So we're going to, once we know the system, we're going to look at it and then we're going to redesign it after we've distorted, intentionally distorted the omega values. Then we're going to use the bilinear transform to convert H of S to H of Z and then write the equation for the digital filter. All right. So let's see. So, shoot, my pages are out of order, sorry. All right, here we go. There's the first page. All right. Here's an example. Let's say that we have some H of S which is going to be equal to s divided by s plus 10 squared. First ask, is this stable? Answer is yes. Uh, what type of filter? And we can look at this, we've done a Bode plot, we know the steps to do a Bode plot. We can see that this is going to be a bandpass filter. So bandpass. What are the critical frequencies? This guy right here. That's the critical frequency. He is, that's the peak value that we're going to obtain. So now if we went through the Bode plot, the first thing we do is find the transfer function, found it. Second thing we do is put in the standard form. Okay, so the standard form for the Bode plot is H of S is going to be equal to S divided by 1 divided by 100 times S divided by 10 plus 1 squared. Third thing we're going to do is plot the magnitudes. And so if we put a little Bode plot out here, and we know that this is 20, 40, this is negative 20, negative 40, 
negative 60. 1 divided by 100. This should be out front, sorry. This should be 1 divided by 100. So we factored out that 10 squared. All right, 1 divided by 100. This is um, constant. 20 log of 1 divided by 100 is equal to negative 40 dBs. So we get our constant value here, constant. And then if we have omega is equal to 1, 10, 100, we know that we have a 20 dB per decade line that goes on in both directions for infinity. And then we have 2 that come down and turn at 10. That gives us a negative 40 dB per decade. Negative. Each one of these has a 3 dB correction. So our constant, our total correction is going to be 6 dBs. So a 6 dB correction. Put this out here on the other side. 6 dB correction. Alright, now we add these. So we start off, we have a negative 20 here, we have a negative 40 here, so it's going to start at negative 60. It's going to rise up at 20 dBs per decade until this 10 dB starts to come into consideration, or the 10, omega is equal to 10, which is a negative 40 dB per decade, so that will cut the slope from um, negative 40 dB, positive 20, end result is negative 20 dB per decade, so that brings it back down to here, and it flows that way. Uh, these should be equivalent. I'm drawing very poorly. You get what I mean? The 6 dB correction is 6 dBs down from this intersection point. So we drop down 6 dBs from here and put that correction point. So now we have our asymptotes. We have our correction point. So we draw the smooth line approximation. And it's going to be something like there. So now looking at this, we can determine what our magnitude is going to be. And that can be used as just a guess and check because in this form we don't actually have to find that k prime. We're, we're going to just do the substitution and that all falls out. But if you were doing this using the pole zero, you now have that magnitude at that point. Anyways, that's what we're trying to do. So, we need to pre-warp the signals. Critical frequency is 10. Now we need to pre-warp. So 1 omega critical is equal to 10 rad per second. 2 pre-warp. Pre warp. There we go. And we have omega tick is going to be equal to t divided by s. I'm sorry, t divided by 2 times tangent of omega t of s divided by 2. This omega is the omega critical, omega c. Omega C, so I'm going to write Omega C right there. All right. Therefore, we know that the Omega tick critical is going to be equal to, uh, first we need to find a T of S. So let's say that we assume, assume our sampling period is going to be equal to uh, pi divided by 1,000. And this is in units of seconds. So this is our T. So now, omega tick of C is going to be equal to this thing times that thing, where omega C is equal to 10, and that results in 2.468 times 10 to the minus 5. Does everybody see how we get that? So this is our new knee frequency for the filter. 
Okay, so now we have this new knee frequency. What we have to do is go back and redesign the filter now with this new frequency. All right, so this is pretty easy because we've got an S plus 10 squared. This S is going to still stay, stay the same. And so um, when we redesign this, what we get, I'm just going to go back up to the top. All right, therefore, H of S redesigned is going to be equal to S divided by S plus 2.468 times 10 to the minus fifth. Okay, so that's going to warp the frequencies around. Now, we apply the bilinear transform. Okay, so this is H of S going to H of Z. This is accomplished by saying that h of z is equal to h of s, where we're substituting in s is equal to 2 divided by t times the z minus 1 divided by z plus 1. So everywhere we see an s, we substitute in this guy. So this is going to be equal to 2 divided by t times z minus 1 divided by z plus 1 divided by quantity 2 times z minus 1 divided by t z plus 1 plus 2.468 times 10 to the minus fifth, all of that squared. Ding, ding, ding. Okay, now, given that, the next thing that we want to do is solve this down a little bit. And so we get that this is equal to 0 0.0016 times z minus 1, z plus 1, divided by z minus 1 squared. And so this is going to be equal to 0 0.0016 z squared minus 0 0.0016 divided by z squared minus 2z plus 1. And then the last thing that we're going to do is to put it in the z minus 1 format. So then we have h of z is going to be equal to 0 0.0016. We're going to factor out these z squareds minus 0 0.0016 z to the minus 2 divided by 1 minus 2 z to the minus 1 plus z to the minus 2. We can do the inverse z transform on this guy and then take these terms and put them on the other side to give us our end result of y of n is equal to 0 0.0016 x of n minus x of n minus 2. I need a parentheses right here, plus 2 y sub n minus 1 minus y sub n minus 2. And that's the answer. All right, I've got about 30 seconds left on this recording, so I'm going to go one step further and say, given this, we can say that B sub 0 is equal to 0 0.0016. B sub 1 is equal to 0. B sub 2 is equal to 0, negative 0 0.0016. Then A sub 0 is equal to 1. A sub 1 is equal to 2, and A sub 2 is equal to minus 